Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this video, I'll be making the final preparations of the headstock for the boring operation. In the previous video, I showed the scraping of the bearing caps as well as the top of the headstock. Now we get to work on the other side of the headstock. The headstock needs to be mounted up to the lathe bed. And to do that, it's basically the same process. We smear paint on the surface plate, distribute that on some sort of reference surface. I started out just using a scrap piece of old rolled steel to mark the bottom of the headstock for scraping, uh, but I quickly determined that I'd rather use the, something I know is flat, like the uh, bed of the lathe, to do that marking. I'm curious if there's a proper term for marking the high spots. Is it called printing or painting or, or staining or laying out? If you know, leave it in the comments. One of the important parts for preparing any casting to mate with a piece of cold rolled steel is to make sure that the edges are square. And to do that, it's easier if you cut a little notch in the casting. And I just did that with a hacksaw. Pretty much once you've got that groove cut, uh, it's a lot easier because you've got two distinct faces to true up against that bearing surface. Scraping down the bottom of the headstock to mate with uh, bedways was a time-consuming process. I did take a lunch and I think I ran some errands for a couple hours, but I have about three hours just in getting the headstock prepped for mounting to the bed. I used several different tools to prepare the castings. I started out with a coarse file and that's a little bit of slow going. On the other side of that file is a rasp uh, and that's a little quicker uh, to remove material. But at some point, I figured I could use this big rasp, and it really cuts off the material pretty quickly. In the second book of the series, David Gingery describes using emery cloth on a surface plate to allow you to quickly reduce a surface to roughly flat before scraping. Uh, I haven't tried that yet, but I think I'll try that in one of the maybe the, on the tailstock videos. That was a question posed by Willem Cawson in part four of the series. Once I had the clamps cut to length, I just C-clamped them onto the bottom of the headstock to see if there was how much play there was uh, on the bed. And there was a little bit of play. I can tell that that was due to a little bit of misalignment on the base of the headstock and by scraping down that little bit was able to get the play out of the headstock. So then I went on to mount the clamps to the headstock and pretty much that just involves drilling the clamps uh, with a center drill and then drilling them with a number seven drill and the number seven uh, drill bit is size correctly for using a quarter 20 tap, which is the fasteners that I use. Then I was able to match drill that number seven hole into the headstock. I then tapped the headstock and I opened up the hole on the clamp to quarter inch and then I countersunk the hole on the clamp. Then I could install the fastener into the headstock and that way one of the holes uh, had a fastener and then I could go through and do the match drilling of the other number seven hole. And that's pretty much the same for both sides of the headstock. After I had the fasteners all made up, I had to cut shims. The first approach that I used was not real good. I folded over the shim stock and then folded it in half and then I trimmed off the corner. And that left holes in the right spots, but the shims were all bent up. I don't think that really matters, but it leaves shims that aren't really flat and so it's kind of hard to put together. What worked a lot better was this little jig that I came up with and it's just pretty much a couple pieces of eighth inch by one inch cold rolled steel that have a couple drill bits that index these pieces together and then I drilled a quarter inch hole and when I drill the hole it doesn't tear out. So that, that worked pretty well. The final step in mounting the headstock to the bedways was the jib screw. So 
So as usual, it's a pain to mount stuff in my drill press for drilling. I had to drill two holes on the side of the headstock, and then I had to tap those holes to accept the jib adjustment screws. The jib operates basically the same way as any of the jibs on the carriage. To mount up the bearing caps, I drilled a hole into the bearing caps, uh, and then I clamped the bearing cap on the headstock where I needed it to be. That way I could match drill the bearing clamps into the headstock. Once I had one hole in the headstock, I was able to tap that hole. Then I enlarged the hole on the bearing cap so that the bolt could go through the bearing cap into the headstock. After I had one side of the bearing clamps mounted up, I then I drilled the bearing clamp and then I match drilled the headstock. After I match drilled the headstock, I tapped the headstock. After I tapped the headstock, I opened up the hole on the bearing cap to allow the bolt to go through and mount the bearing cap to the headstock. After I had the headstock mounted to the bedways and the bearing caps mounted onto the headstock, I had to fabricate a temporary apron that would couple the lead screw to the headstock. And this drives the headstock along the boring bar for the boring operation. The temporary apron is steel that I had lying around in the scrap pile. I just kind of eyeballed it and marked it out. And then I used my angle grinder to cut out a couple different pieces. Put one of the pieces into the vise and I hammered it over so that that way is roughly aligned. Uh, there's a little bit of an offset between the lead screw and the permanent headstock. I used several longer screws uh, that went through both those pieces to clamp down on the coupler that I have on the lead screw. Once I had that mounted up, I went ahead and drilled the hole to fasten the temporary apron to the headstock. That didn't go so well. The drill bit grabbed and, and then after that I snapped off the screw head. That was kind of a pain. Ah. But anyway, I, I was able to just move it over a little bit and file down through and it's stuck in the headstock now. But I uh, moved it down a little bit. I re-drilled some holes. It was a little bit more easy going with the uh, mounting. And, and then the lead screw moved the headstock just fine. After all this is done, I finally was able to transfer the location of the boring bar to the headstock. The next video will show the boring operation of the headstock. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. If you liked the video, click the like button. Subscribe to Maker Size, check out some of our other videos, and we'll see you next time. That was a recommendation of uh, one of the readers, a reader who reads a YouTube video.